in life. Okay, okay, just hear me out. This is what I believe. When you're falling, and this is, and please don't get me wrong, it's not in a bad way. I guess it's about growth. So, imagine falling in a hole, right? Now, there's these branches that reach out that you can grab onto so to, to save your fall. Well, my new thing that I came up with, touch ground. Don't reach out to the branches. People that extend their hands out to help you, even they are helping. Even their intent is help. It's another rabbit hole. And then you're in their hole, and then you gotta get out of that hole. And then you gotta get out of that hole, and then you out of there, and then you fall in again. And then you get under there another person's rabbit hole. And then you get another person's rabbit hole. Touch ground. That's what I say. Touch ground. And don't be withered. So, the other thing is this. As far as religion goes, now, Okay, we know that there's there's rated R, there's PG, and there's triple X. So, content wise, now, you know the parental advisory label on mature content? Could, yeah, yeah. could, though the Bible is good, it could still be for mature content. I think we were crammed down with that stuff too early. We needed to play like kids. We didn't need to be in a church doing hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Not saying hallelujah, thank you, Jesus is bad. It's good. But we it was it was for mature content. And that's what I believe. Meaning, so what do you mean? What makes you come to that conclusion? Okay, for instance, part of my suicidal is what? Well, the world's going to end. Preachers say, oh, the world's going to end. Though I was like eight or whatever when I heard it, it still went into my psyche. That's not content that a kid should be listening to. Though it's good content, it's just not appropriate for a kid to be listening to. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, okay. You hear hear my my thesis where I'm getting off with this? Okay. Yeah. And there's a lot of content in there. That's good. That's good. But it's not for kids. You see what I'm saying? It's triple X on the good side. See, we think of PG rated R and triple X as bad, but there's also good PG, triple X, and rated R. The Bible and being bipolar manic depressant you know come on you're a psychiatrist I mean you're a therapist you know how we can get with this with religion it's not a good mix (laughs) you know what I mean I mean I I may say it it may sound kind of funny but I'm the one to be taking a broom and start rebuking roaches there was a famous movie where a woman was mentally ill and she was had a broom in her hand and she was rebuking roaches with the broom but I'm just saying, that's a picture. Okay. You get that picture? I don't think, okay, this is my big question. When someone comes up and start witnessing to you, I'm just throwing this out. If someone comes up and start preaching the Bible to you and they say, 
this is the one key fact, and it just dawned on me like this. I was like, hold on a second. All these false prophets around. That's strange. But God is love, and God don't like deceit. Well, well, why would God have someone come to you, Kashela, and tell you something that, if God is omnipotent like they say it is, if God is omnipotent like they say it is, well, couldn't God come speak to you itself? Now, that's a question. What do you think about that? So I think that God could definitely come and talk to me himself. He's God. He can do anything, right? Right. Um, but, but just because he yeah, can doesn't mean he always will. Well, don't you see how the false prophet could get in that by getting somebody else to... You know, the preacher tell you a whole bunch of stuff, get you all mushy, mushy, and then say, oh, God told me to tell you. God told me to tell you. And now you're under the preacher's wing, and now you're doing stuff that, now here, I'm going to stretch a little further. Whenever you get in witness to or whatever by people, blah, 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 whatever, right? Then they invite you to their church. Then, all of a sudden, you hear these people start speaking in this tongue. Now, mind you, it's not a language that anyone speaks. So I came up with this myself. I came up with this. Say, you know something? Whenever someone starts speaking in a language that's not a written language, get out of that place. Those people are up to no good. Okay. You I, understand? I, I, I respect that. I respect that. But I'm just saying, I'm just as vulnerable as the next guy. You see what I'm saying? My mom even told me. She was like, Rodney, listen, you don't drink alcohol. You don't, you, don't, you don't go out and you don't be getting high and stuff. Those people are saved, but they were running the streets like whatever. She goes, you not supposed to be hanging around with them people and going to church with them because they have nothing to offer you. You need to hang out with your peers. You don't need to be under a gospel under preachers that used to be. You know what I'm. You understand what I'm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not quite. You gotta explain that a little bit more. So, if a preacher, you know how the preachers they preach and they tell about how they used to be in their life, whatever. Well, in the congregation, like it's kind of like, uh, first of a feather flock together, right? Not saying that it's bad. Okay. They're good. God forgave them and everything. Okay, right, fine. Okay? You know like that classic story of the guy that spent years in jail and now he come out a preacher? That's a false prophet. No. I've never been in jail. i never committed a crime. I'm not a whatever. You know what I'm saying? So why am I following a flock of people that used to do that? They have nothing to offer me. Okay. Now you get it? Now, there it. God is big. God is a lot. God is powerful. Like they say it is. God is omnipotent and all-knowing. So there is a congregation somewhere with bipolar, manic depressive, with mentally ill people. I need to hang out with them, not hang out with criminals. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's far as the religious part go. Well, okay, let me back up to make it kind of make sense. There's a guy that shops at the store, and he comes in, and he's talking all this Bible, Bible, Bible stuff. And then it dawned on me, like, hold on a second. Don't get caught up in this dude. You don't know this guy. No. And when my mom told me years ago, because there was these people doing that, and they were inviting me to a church and stuff, and I was trying to be good and like, okay, yeah. Oh, mom, I found these people, blah, blah, blah. And my mom, my mom, my mom said, she goes, listen, no. Now, my church that I went up with, I'm going to be honest, okay? They, the preacher that preached to us had content. He read he wasn't just, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. No, he was speaking content to us. He taught us. He was a teacher. He wasn't just this, hallelujah, thank you, hallelujah. Well, you understand what I'm saying? Do you? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, meaning, um, just be more like, like, 
know my upbringing and go on that. That's far as the religious stuff goes. Because during a pandemic, you know, this COVID thing, everybody's going crazy. So you got a whole bunch of people running around talking about wanting you to join their church, wanting you to join their church and stuff. And I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my God, no. I can't fall in this guy's rabbit hole. No. Well, that's no, I'm not going to do that. No. You know what I mean? And he's like inviting me to his church and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe just a red flag came up to me and was like, no, don't, don't do that. 